Hey. Hey, how's it going? Excellent. Like hey, how are you guys doing? I was just watching the the end of your show there. <clears throat> well, we, cool. we're still doing all right, you know. Games are over, but there'll be more next week. Unfortunately, not for your team. Yeah, what a night. I mean, that was... Uh... <laughs> Our match was great. I saw a little bit of the other matches, which were very, very exciting as well. I mean, Wednesdays have become the best day for chess, period, huh? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's true. I get up in the morning and I turn on chess. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, okay, so... Um, well, um, tell us, you were a player for the Hackers this year, but you were also in another role helping them with uh, media and sort of growing. Yeah. The so team. in general, I'm like a very busy guy. I'm teaching a lot and studying and doing all this work. And then about a week before the Pro Chess League started, I realized that we didn't have anything on social media, like no Twitter account, no Facebook, nothing. Uh, I so think I, that's I, I about. Messaged. I think that's about when all the other teams. <laughs> <laughs> made their Twitter accounts too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I messaged Greg and I basically said, like, what should we do as far as social media goes? Um, so the hackers are basically organized and, and mo uh, mostly sponsored by Bay Area Chess, which mm -hmm. is this organization out in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. And um, the the two managers of the team, Abel and Judah, they, they do an excellent job, but they have full time jobs as well. So they couldn't manage the team and do the social media. So I stepped in mm -hmm. and Greg basically said, do a lot of tweets, do a lot of Facebook posts and uh, start a Twitch channel uh, to stream coverage of, of each match. Yeah. Um, so I did exactly that. I, I figured, uh, <laughs> well, I'm not going to get many fans, but if someone is only interested in, in the San Jose matches and, and right. we have a lot of fans in the Bay Area, then they can tune in. And I mean, I think we did a great job. We won a couple of uh, like weekly social media awards, which is really right. cool. Yeah, I'm going to click to the prizes for a second so everyone can see that there are weekly prizes here for best game, best move, best blog, best video live show, best performing social media. So you you may or may not have been in the running for best move each week, but best blog, best video, and best social media, that's three different prizes to go for. And I think I saw you win several of those. Yeah, I think we won best blog a, a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Not sure about social media because that one was like... I mean, a lot of teams are doing great stuff on social media, not just in the U.S., but I think uh, like the the team from Iceland and the the team yeah. from the two teams from France were also doing really good stuff, like engaging with the fans. Yeah, so you did exactly what Greg suggested, and it was pretty successful. Um, yeah, it really worked out. I mean, we had we had an ace in the hole, you know, young uh, Christopher Yu. Who okay. You guys have probably seen by now the, the youngest mm -hmm. national master in u.s history um he he was very interested in, in doing the commentary which is unusual for a, a 10 year old child yeah <laughs> so i thought it'd be fun to have him on one of the shows and he just crushed it i mean clearly this is a kid who like watches commentary all the time when he's like studying on his own and did, he did so good did you ask him or did he tell you he wanted to do it i think he reached out to me wow um, and he went on and he's like, he's saying all the right things. He's talking about like the, the clocks and the practical situation of the match and what you calculate. I mean, just like, right. Really, really great commentary. And, you know, we released a couple of highlight videos cause he would also go crazy whenever there was a, like a nice <laughs> tactic on the board. He would just like, literally like a little kid, he'd get very, very excited about it. And it was, it was very fun to watch, also a blast to, to work with, of course. Right, so it's kind of trippy. He's going back and forth between being like a seasoned adult <laughs> TV <laughs> personality and being like a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty no, much. Well, that, that's okay, you know. Traditionally, uh, traditionally, a thought was that first you become a great player, whatever, world champion, and mm -hmm. then you become a writer and commentator. But some people do it the other way around. Well, First time I heard of Anish Giri when uh, he was commenting on the match, uh, Anand Tapalov. And I never even heard the name before. Mm -hmm. I go, who is this kid commenting? Now I know who Giri is. Yeah. That works. Yeah, he's also a star of social media. You're right. You know, yeah. so all this. So you 
Costa, you exactly point them point at them in the right direction, so that's good. Yeah, and he's had a great time, so I'm really glad <laughs> really glad we he joined us. Um, do you know anything about how the hackers picked their lineups um for some matches during the year, or was that handled by Abel and Judith? Yeah, we, we would usually have a, a little talk each week about how we chose lineups. Um you know, we, we got a little bit of unlucky. There were all these potential lineups that we had that were just off by like a couple of rating points like literally five six rating points mm -hmm. um so we had to do a lot of gymnastics because we have well christopher you he's under 2000 fide so that that's great um and, and we used them i think in one or two matches and then we had a couple of other juniors on board for specifically ivan who played tonight and and played last week yeah uh, and and timu as well and the problem is timu was uh Timo was a really, really good player. We wish we could have used him more because he uh, he had that amazing win against Grandmaster uh, Belarus from Rio Grande a couple of weeks ago okay. where he like pulls the upset in this like crazy time scramble. But he was just a little bit too high rated. We, we wish we could have used him uh. in more matchups. So our hands were tied a little bit. And of course, there's the rule of, you know, you're only allowed one free agent uh, every, uh, you know, per the four player lineup. Mm -hmm. um, and we have these two amazing guys from Azerbaijan, Mamed Yarov and Mamedov. Of right. course, we can only use one of them. We would have loved to, to have used both. <laughs> yeah. That would also give you more incentive to use Christopher Yu on board four as a 2000 rated player if it would allow you to play Mamed Yarov and Mamedov. Is that I, I, true? I mean, I think that would have been a championship lineup. But I mean, of course, yeah. they, they want us to use local players. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, Mamedov, he's actually done some work for Bay Area Chess. So this wasn't just some like... A random free agent pickup he's like visited the club and done some lectures yeah so it was a very natural fit for him to play for our team yeah um i've seen him at the uh amateur team championship playing on bay area chess teams that's right <laughs> um so so why didn't you play chris you more was it because his commentary was was even more exciting or important for the mm -hmm. team <laughs> um you know i i think it was just that we had this other player, Ivan, who was just performing really well. Um, he had already scored a couple upsets. His fee day is around 2,100, but I, I think he's probably 100 points underrated. Uh -huh. um, and, and Christopher Yu, he did really great the first week. You know, in week one, we uh, we actually beat Webster by a large margin, 10 to 6. Yeah. And that was basically because Christopher Yu scored, I think, two and a half points out of four. Yeah. Uh, which is just insane. Um, I also, think the that, only I match Webster ever lost. Oh, was it really? Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, <laughs> well, continue. That, Sorry. That's cool. No, no, no. I, I actually didn't realize. I knew they, they had done great, of course, because they got the bye. I didn't realize they, they hadn't lost a match since then. Yeah. Um, and then I think Christopher struggled with one or two matches after that. I, I don't remember his exact score, but he, he didn't play as well as the first week. And then Ivan was doing good, and so we kind of had the mentality of like, well, whoever's playing well should should play the matches. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, so how did your Twitch do as far as like getting viewers while competing with Alex and me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I'm I'm very very happy with how it went. By the way, I don't, did you guys see the finish in round four? The the checkmate that Zviad Azoria put on the board against uh, Durer Bailey. Yeah, did that yeah, have we Chris Yu squealing? About this a lot, you know. We were screaming for it. And we were so happy that Wasif allowed it. He yeah, yeah. yeah. Same here, because I mean, essentially the match was just about clinch, so it was really good sportsmanship of him just allow the mate because uh, the the match was basically over uh so i'm glad you got you guys got to see that and yeah yeah the the twitch went really well i mean we we've been streaming every week we usually get between like 30 to 40 viewers at a time which is definitely not a whole lot but considering we have like almost no marketing for it outside of like the bay area i mean it was it was nice like almost everyone watching was a specific fan of the team either they're taking classes with Bay Area Chess or they're like students of, of some of the players. So it was like very, very nice support. Um, and we got good support from the league as well. I, I thought it would be a little bit awkward at first because we're directly competing with Chess TV. Yeah. But um, it was more of a like, it was a very inclusive approach. Like the they would often retweet us on Twitter. 
uh, Greg Shahadi would would promote our our stream all the time. So I was really happy to like get the support from the league as well. Yeah, well, I think for a first season that seems like a pretty good number. Um, do you, do you have any thoughts of uh, like what to do to continue to popularize the San Jose Hackers in the local Bay Area community? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's just about getting the word out. I mean, we're in Silicon Valley. That's, of course, how we got the name, the Hackers. And uh, chess is so popular. I mean, if you go to like any of the big companies or any of the startups, there are so many um, like employees, so many techies playing chess. Like I went to Dropbox headquarters, for example, and play chess with a, a bunch of people there who are like just very, very like huge fans of the game. Um, so I think it's just a matter of getting the word out that like San Jose has an actual professional chess team. I think if people heard about it, they, they would probably think it's it's pretty cool. Um, I mean, the Bay Area, yeah. this is the place where you have like leagues of like ultimate Frisbee and all these like random games and sports. I think it's not crazy that chess would also see the same uh, support as some of the other the other sports. Right. So so you've you've put together the social media and the Twitch and all that. But now you also need to like f- try and find and specifically connect with some people and market the team a little bit more in the off season. Yeah, like, you know, write some write some blogs, write a, a BuzzFeed article. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ten things you didn't know about San Jose's professional chess team, right? Like, <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I, I but, think, uh, oh. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but the, the off season is going to be so long, you know. You guys need to come up with some kind of California league or something. I don't know. Get other teams involved. I think that would help. Otherwise, you know, like what to do there, you know, that wait for what almost a year till till next year yeah i mean we we need to get some closure on the season right like a a full recap blog at the end this is how we did we advanced to the uh the sweet 16 we got knocked out here is like the critical moments and then maybe closer to next year uh around i don't know november december start like putting up the hype like oh the hackers are back and we're gonna start you know our second season of the pro chess league uh, and I think, I mean, I think we have good chances of, of raising some buzz. Mm-hmm. Um, and and the goal there is both to get more fans and maybe to find sponsors. What what would you rather have, a sponsor or like another thousand fans watching you guys? I think, well, I think they, the sponsor would go hand in hand. So I'll take the fans. You take the fans first have, and the sponsor will come. Absolutely. I mean, if we have a thousand loyal uh, followers watching, um, I mean, I, I think that, might not seem like a lot, but I don't know. I, I think that could attract some attention. I mean, these companies, they have so much extra cash, you know. What is it to Google to give us like $3,000, like fund our whole year? Yeah. <laughs> and 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 say, okay, they're supporting a chess team. I mean, I think that'd be awesome. Yeah. If I had that much money, <laughs> I, I would sponsor every team. Like, whatever. You guys are all cool. Here you go. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. Cool. Uh, Any other questions, Alex? Uh, no, I was just uh, fascinated, you know, listening to all this. You know, that's really, I well, uh, I'm glad, Kosti, that you did this. You know, I'm a, I'm not a social media person, as you might imagine, but well, now that I know, well, maybe I'll follow you guys. Yeah, you can follow <laughs> their Twitter. Absolutely, we're, we're San Jose hackers on Twitter. Uh, my I'm personally Hello Costia on Twitter, as I am on pretty much all social media platforms. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we're all on the same team. Like, we're all trying to raise awareness for chess. It, we're not trying to trick anyone. We all know chess is like this amazing game, and it's just a matter of like getting the word out that people realize that this is like really, really fascinating sport. Yeah. Well, not to ask you a question that would be awkward if your answer is no, but does it seem like the feeling is most of the people involved in the hackers team? are pretty happy with what happened this year and interested in continuing to build their franchise next year. Oh yeah, I mean we, we had a great time. Like we we've had this um this group uh text going the whole year and you know every week it doesn't matter who's playing it everyone's watching, everyone's sending like good luck and well wishes and uh you know it's like I don't think we've had any specific superstars uh throughout the year all the players have sort of pulled their weight mm-hmm. so to speak and and we've had this like 
team motto going that when someone isn't performing, you know, the other team members, they, uh, they pick them up. Um, so I think we've had a great, a great time. I mean, you know, just, just for comparison, it's like the weeks where Mamed Yarov wasn't playing or where Mamedov wasn't playing, they're still watching the match and rooting for us and like looking at the games. And I mean, I think that's, that really shows something like, yeah, because we're always playing during, you know, 630 a.m. in Azerbaijan. So right. <laughs> they're not playing. They still wake up and watch the match. I think that's really uh, awesome team commitment. Right. And people think of the free agents as being like hired guns, especially, I mean, a player of that kind of class, you know, like Mamadov yeah. top 100, Mamad Yarov number three in, in rapid chess and number 10 in normal chess. I mean, they're not getting paid to to get up and watch you guys and root for you and send you messages. Yeah, I mean that that's kind of the the team spirit. So it's all like, I mean, everyone really like was committed to their to their role in, in the league. Uh, I wish I had done <laughs> better. I I think mm-hmm. I probably have the worst uh, performance rating because I went zero out of six this mm-hmm. year <laughs> during yeah. the regular season, but. Yeah. I, I tried to make up for it, you know, with the, the social media. With other contributions. You <laughs> try to still pick up the Raising team the as you can. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, um, congratulations on a great season. Thanks for um, coming on here and being our first interviewee in these, uh, in these shows, <laughs> breaking fresh yeah. social thanks. media grounds. Mm-hmm. Well, and, thanks for having me. And, and thanks so much to all the fans that are like, still watching and, and supporting the league. I, I think it's it's really awesome. Wouldn't make a whole lot of sense without people watching. Absolutely. And who do you see winning the league this year? Well, I, I picked San Jose, obviously, uh, in San my Jose. bracket. Um, <laughs> and I, I had us defeating um, Marcel in the finals. So okay, I, I'm going to say go MVL. <laughs> so now you would think probably Marseille would be the... Yeah, but I mean, okay, St. Louis is just is too good. I mean... As long as Wesley So stays healthy and active, like I don't see who can really beat them. Yeah, and he's been playing just nonstop. Like he's not really missing matches that I can recall. And and brilliant. I mean, I tuned in when he played rookie six against <laughs> Bayev. I mean, my God. Yeah, <laughs> that's rough. And the G three move that led up to it was like pretty, pretty yeah. sweet too. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was really- yeah, because well, you can I have that West Pride. Though. Like whichever team comes out of the Pacific is going to do well. Yeah, you know, it's kind of nice that, like, we lost at the same time as San Diego. This was kind of our, our sister team. Mm-hmm. Even when we played, we had a very, very friendly rivalry going. And we're always, like, rooting for each other just because, well, I personally have a lot of friends on their team. Okay. I'm from SoCal. Yeah, you are. Um, so it's a little bit symbolic that we kind of uh, exited the field. Went out but we together. Yeah, we would have loved to see them win, of course. Yeah. Um, they had a good season, too, but the Pacific was tough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. Well, I think I think we can wrap it up for tonight. I hope everybody's enjoyed the show. If you guys have any remaining questions about the league or anything that happened today, just uh, send an email to Greg Shahadi. He'll be happy to answer all your emails promptly because um, he has not very much work to do running the whole league. And uh, we'll see you again next week um, yep. for the finals of the Pacific Division. There will be only a single match in each division, but all four divisions will be playing next week at around the same time. Uh, the Eastern Division in the morning, Norway Gnomes versus the Gorky Stormbringers. And, and then, you know, on throughout the day, the Central <laughs> Division, the Atlantic, and the Pacific will all be playing around their normal time, a single match. Um, only four games at a time to watch, so it's getting a little easier for Alex and me. 